Meine Damen und Herren, Ladies and Gentlemen, I don't need to remind an Austrian audience of the importance of social dialogue. Social dialogue is part of the DNA of Austria. Some 96% of your private sector and all public sector employees come under collective agreements. And more than a quarter of private sector enterprises have workplace representation. Indeed, Europe can learn from Austria in terms of managing labor relations in real partnership. Two years ago, in this forum, you concluded that solid social partnership contributes to a country's overall economic performance. Indeed, while the crisis took its toll on social dialogue across Europe, in member states like yours, the strong social dialogue structures actually helped weather the storm. Before I became politician, I was myself representative of a social partner organization. I experienced the unique role of social partners in setting social and economic benchmarks, including legislation related to work, wages and aspects of social protection. You have invaluable knowledge of the economy and the labor market. You can play a crucial role in identifying those sectors that will bring jobs in the future, foresee those skills that will be demanded. These are all reasons why this Commission has put social dialogue back in the spotlight as one of the cornerstones of the European social model. We know that a stronger social dialogue at European level can only function well if it works at national level. Here we see considerable room for improvement since in some member states social partners are weak and the institutional conditions for social dialogue are fragile. This is a very different reality from what you have experienced for 70 years in Austria, where institutions are strong, social partnership is well promoted, and as a result, it delivers. While fully supporting and upholding the autonomy of social partners, the Commission aims to strengthen social partners' capacities to come up with real solutions. This is also reflected in the quadripartite statement on social dialogue signed by the Council, the Commission and the European Social Partners last June. The Commission is committed to giving social partners a stronger role than in the past. This means a closer involvement in economic governance, including your role in the design and implementation of reforms at national level. We are also involving social partners more closely in the development of all policies having an impact on the labour market. In particular, you have a prominent role in the ongoing consultation on a European pillar for social rights. The rationale for a European pillar of social rights stems from the rapid pace of change in a technology-driven and increasingly globalised world of work. It is also rooted in the reality of an aging population and shrinking workforce. The consultation process, which is running up to the end of the year, will provide us with guidance on how to develop the social dimension of Europe and of our economic and monetary union in particular. The principles it enshrines should lead to upward social convergence and better functioning labour markets. Ladies and gentlemen, an area where the experience of social partners and of Austrian social partners in particular will be of great value is the integration of refugees and migrants. In 2015 alone, there were more than 1.2 million first-time asylum applications. In the first quarter of this year, an additional 280,000 were submitted. It is clear that Austria is one of the member states which has been most affected. The European Commission has been consistently and continuously working for a coordinated European response. While the flow of refugees has considerably diminished in the past months, we know that many of the people who have reached our European member states will not be able to return to their home country. The integration of migrants into society and the labour market is now one of the most important challenges we face together. 
as we all know, this has not always worked out in the past. Importantly, it is a process which entails responsibilities from both sides. Two things must, however, be kept in mind. Firstly, the cost, in the broadest sense of the word, for non-investing in integration will be far higher than that of effective integration policies. And secondly, all citizens in our society will benefit from effective integration policies. Think, for instance, of the demographic challenge faced by many of our member states. The European Union has an important role to play in providing support and guidance to member states. In June this year, we presented our action plan on the integration of third country nationals to support further development and strengthening of national integration policies. The action plan promotes pre-arrival measures on language training, skills profiling and information on destination countries. It also follows a cross-cutting approach for people who have arrived in the member state of destination, taking into account activation, education and training, or healthcare and housing. What seems of central importance to me is that the success of integration depends on the involvement of all relevant actors. This includes regional and local authorities as well as civil society organizations, but of course also you, the social partners. Your support is especially needed in the area of employment as it is a core part of the integration process. Finding a job is fundamental to become part of a host country's economic and social life. Social partners can, for example, provide input for the anticipation of labour market needs. You can also offer access to your networks and your training and education facilities. One such good example that comes to mind is the Mentoring for Migrants project by the Austrian Economic Chambers. I highly commend such initiatives and I encourage you to share the lessons you learned with your European counterparts. We need to be pragmatic and we need to act today. Investing resources and energy in integration policies which work on the ground will be indispensable to make European societies more cohesive and inclusive in the long run. Thank you. <laughs>